you know it's wonderful to think about gifts? How many of you have a gift on or with you that you got this Christmas? We went to a home one day on Christmas Day and had all kind of little kids, and they'd gotten all kind of gifts. I mean, there were boxes everywhere and everything, just running around, the kids playing with everything. And about 2 o'clock that afternoon, a little fella come walking in, looked up this mama, and he says, Mama, what can I do? I don't have anything to play with. And I just thought, all those toys, and you know we Christians are like that. God is so good to us to give us things. And we read sometimes that one size fits all. So I tried to picture that in my mind. Can you see a sweater that one size fits all? Here's old scrawny Jim puts the sweater on. And then here's this guy that's overly plump tries to put it on. How does one size fit all? But I've got news for you. The gift that lasts, one size fits all. A gift that will last forever. So if you would, stand with me. We're going to read our scripture together, John 3, 16. Would you stand in John 3, 16? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Father, thank You for the greatest gift ever given. Thank You it never wears out, never gets undersized, never have to adjust it. It always gets better. It gets better with age. Because, Father, through your peace and grace and joy, the gift you gave us doesn't only last here, but it lasts for an eternity. And, God, we don't have to ask what we can do when we receive that gift because you tell us with the joy to serve you, with the joy to share it with others, with the joy to, to just praise you for God's unspeakable gift. And may we worship you now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to add this little note. Uh, most people stand for scriptures, and they get it from Nehemiah. I want to tell you today we're going to fulfill that, all that scripture because the Bible said they stood the whole time the preacher preached for three hours. So if you're going to stand for scripture, you can stand back up while I preach. I'm just kidding. But think of this, the gift. A man by the wonderful name of Dwight L. Moody. Heard a young man preach one time, and or he came to hear Moody preach, and he walked up to Moody, and he said, Mr. Moody, I'm a minister. If I come to America, can I preach in your tabernacle? And Moody said, yes, reluctantly. But Barnhouse did come, knocked on Moody's door, and said, Mr. Moody, I'm here. When do you want me to preach? Barnhouse got up that first day, and he preached John 3. 16. It moved Moody so much, he invited him to preach the next night, and the next, and the next, and for the whole week. The last night, Barnhouse got up and he said, Folks, I've been trying to tell you all week how much God loves you. And my text is John 3, 16. Every time Barnhouse preached, that was his text. John 3, 16. Angel Martinez said, if all the Bible were destroyed, and we still had John 3, 16, there's enough gospel in it to save the whole world. Because you can take each word, and each one of them moves like God gave life, eternal life. It's wonderful to look at those verbs and adjectives describing what God did. Because you see, he had just finished talking to Nicodemus. Nicodemus, you must be born again. He said, how can I? Can enter my mother's womb. And he gave a great, great illustration as Moses lift up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. In Numbers 22, we find the people rebelled against God. The serpents began to bite them, and it began to destroy them. And when they were destroyed, when they put the bronze serpent in the midst of the camp, all you have to do is just look. You know, that's really hard to understand, isn't it? People say, well, I can't understand how to be saved. It's really hard to say just by faith, look. Just look at the serpent. Because we love our sin, you know what some of them say, well, I love my snake. I kind of got used to getting along with it. I'll be able to just keep it. 
Some say, well, I can handle it. I can just shake the snake off and go on, and I'll be all right. I can just shake my sin off. I, I can quit sinning any time I want to. But you know, I'm afraid to give it up because I don't know if I can really live the Christian life or not. But the Bible said it's not rocket science that when God gave His Son, look to Jesus and believe. Angel Martinez gives us four words, and I want to borrow those four words, so if you got his book, you'll find them. And I did use them, so I want you to notice. He said that John 3, 16 is written to the music of the key of be saved. Had four moving parts. Number one, he said, the cause of salvation, for God so loved the world. Movement number two, that he gave his only begotten son. And that's the cost of salvation. Number three is the condition of salvation. For whosoever believeth on him shall not, for whosoever believeth on him shall not perish. But then the consequences. Not perish, the promise have eternal life. So let's look at those four things. Number one, the cause of salvation. For God so loved the world. Job said, salvation is of the Lord. As God was ministering to him in his sickness, and he came to that conclusion, salvation is of God. When you start reading today in our modern time and all the different things going on, you'll find people think that they thought up salvation. They'll tell you what you have to do to be good and what you have to do to go to church and what you have to do to read the Bible. But the Bible said God thought it. I heard this one time. Jimmy may want this outline. My pastor, Brother Jim, I love that guy. The Bible said uh, God thought it. Jesus bought it. The Holy Spirit wrought it. The devil fought it. And I caught it. Aren't you glad you can do that? For God so loved. So we notice God, the Lord, brings salvation. Before he formed the foundation of the earth, he planned our redemption through Jesus Christ. But not only is salvation of the Lord and God, but the salvation is of love. Have you ever thought of a different kind of love? I heard of a fickle love. This lady told her husband she loved him so much she'd just do anything for him. Well, that night she did. She took a little jar of the black widow spider and stuck it to his back. That's fickle love. That's patriotic love. I began to wonder in America, because I've always been American, I love the flag, and I love to, to praise the country and thank God for who we are, but a lot of people don't love America anymore. There is parental love. But you know, when a parent says to their child, wash your face and I'll love you, that's not God kind of love. God said, I love you, now wash your face. You see, beloved, the Bible says love is of salvation. The love of God, agape love, a love that's, a love that's hard to describe to some because God loves you just like you are. The Bible said God commanded His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Aren't you glad of that? Here in His love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sin. And not for our sin only, but for the sin of the whole world. Aren't you glad of that? Amen. See, we got a modern day movement on in Southern Baptist life and it's called Calvinism. And they say that God chooses the ones He's going to save. And before you're born, He knows where you're going to be saved or not. For you got two kids, one of them predestined to hell, none predestined to heaven. I don't have a God like that. My God says the love of God is for everyone, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Aren't you glad of that? Amen. Beloved, the love of God brings that salvation. But not only the love of salvation of God, but there's the salvation for the lost. Aren't you glad the Bible said in Luke 19, 10, For the Son of Man came to seek and save that which was lost. I'm proud God looked for me. You're not here by accident this morning if you're not saved. God's going to ring your doorbell. He's going to speak to you. You may be like the man one time came down to church in, in Millington, and he was a Navy man, and I preached, and he came after the servant. He said, I don't like you. He said, I've never been here before, but said, you sit there and describe me to a T. He said, someone must have told you I was a coming. I said, they did. God said it. 
Because, see, when you preach the Word of God, He zeroes in on you. So the Bible said He loves you as a sinner. He doesn't love you after you get saved. He loves you just like you are, warts and all. He loves you this morning. And He said, for God so loved. It was so deep. It's not just love, but He so loved the world. So that is the cause that salvation is your gift today. Because He said the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But notice the cost of salvation. The Bible said that He gave His only begotten Son. God is a giver. And the Bible said He gave His only begotten Son. We see the price that was paid. Have you ever gone to a restaurant and eat and you go up to the cashier and she said it's paid for? Have you gone to a car dealer and you walk in to pay and they hand you the receipt and said paid in full? Have you ever thought about how wonderful it is for somebody to do those things for you? But you know we try to earn our salvation. But the Bible said, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. God said, I have a gift for you. I paid the price for it already. I used to laugh when I'd read about Angel Martinez. He was a Mexican guy that, that was raised in a poor family and didn't have many clothes to wear. And he said some, some old maids built him a, made him a suit and said you could tell they were old maids because they didn't put necessary things in it that a man needs. And, and said one day he got up and preached and this guy came down and he said, Angel, I want to help you out. Said you're a young boy about 15 years of age at that time. Said I want to buy you some clothes. Go down in the car. Go down to this clothing store. Go in and tell the man and give him this card and get your clothes. Well, he went down, didn't know whether the man really would acknowledge it or not. And he went back and picked out a pair of pants he could afford and picked out a no-looking coat he could afford and brought it up and laid it on the counter. And that man says, is this all? He said, aren't you Angel Martinez? He said, yes. He said, this guy told me to let you have anything in this store that you wanted. He said he shouldn't have said it. He said, I went back, and when I left, I was the best-dressed Mexican in Mexico <laughs> because that man took care of it. You know what? This morning you can come here a sinner, but you can leave here the best-dressed Christian in the world because God said, help yourself. Just help yourself. I've got it for you. I'll give you the greatest gift there is. I'll give you the gift of eternal life. It's already paid for. Wouldn't it be wonderful that if everyone would accept that and believe it and receive it? Because the Bible said, He bought us with a price, therefore glorify God in your bodies which belong to Christ. But you see, He paid something for it. He paid the precious blood, the perfect price, the precious blood. First Peter 1.18, the Bible said, You were not bought with corruptible things of silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus. He didn't just pull out His billfold, He pulled out His heart. And when God pulled out his heart, he said, my son is going to the cross. He shed the blood. Without the shedding of the blood, there's no remission of sin. And the blood of Jesus, that precious blood, paid my redemption. We sing, are you washed in the blood? Don't you like to think about that? And the Bible said the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleansed us from all sin. And I thank God for that. I thank God, beloved, when he cleanses us from sin, we can walk in him and our sins are washed away. It's paid in full. I like that stamped on my heart. When I stand before God, the old devil say, well, look at this guy. You know how mean he was? I know how mean I am. But God said, yes. But Jesus said, God, he's one of ours. I've washed him in the blood. There's nothing held against him. Enter into heaven. Won't that be sweet? Amen. Won't that be great? Just been saved by the blood of Jesus. But then our soul is the purchase price paid in full, stamped on every Christian. Take heed, therefore, he said to yourselves, and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseer, to feed the church of God that he has purchased with his own blood. The Bible said there's the cause. God loves us. There's a cause, cost he gave his son. Then I want you to notice movement number three. The Bible says that whosoever believeth in him. Whosoever believeth in him. Notice the scope of it. Whosoever I like that. You know, he didn't say if Ray Newcomb. He didn't say if, if Bill or Jim. He said for whosoever. You know why he said that? I was so shocked one day I went to the church for a funeral. Dear old saint there in the community died. and The family asked me to do the funeral. And I 
walked in there, and I always talked to the guys in charge of the service, and I said, you got a program worked out, the songs and all? And he said, yeah, and he handed it to me. And I read down, and it said this, soloist, Miss Ray Newcomb. I looked at him, and I said, sir, did I read that right, Miss Ray Newcomb? He said, yes. I said, I can't wait for this. I've never heard my wife sing a solo in all of her life. And she's going to sing for this funeral. He said, this one is from down at the church in Memphis. I said, wait a minute. I'm Ray Newcomb. He said, they told me you were. But let me let you meet this person. I met her, and she said, I'm Mrs. Ray Newcomb. So I preached revival in that church. Now, first thing I said was, would Ray Newcomb please stand up? I want to see him because, you see, there's somebody out there has your name. And it may not be your name he's calling when he says, if Ray Newcomb, but he said, whosoever. I like that, don't you? Whosoever includes everybody, Tom, Dick, Sam, I don't care who you are, what your name is. You may be Rimpendinkle or whatever you want to be named, but the Bible said, God said, whosoever. Aren't you glad of that? Whosoever believeth. On him, but notice this: not only there the scope of it, there's the salvation in it. He said, "Believe, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and I shall be saved." I preached in one church, and when I'd finished the interim, one of the cowbell deacons came up to me and says, uh, "He said, I didn't tell you why here, but you preach easy believism." I said, "Sir," he said, "You preach easy believism." I looked him right in the face, and I said, how many rocket scientists does it take to say when Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and I shall be saved? Now, what kind of rocket science does it take to figure that out? What kind of rocket science does it take when the Bible said, whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life? What kind of rocket science is that? We try to make something so easy, so difficult. He said, if you'll receive me by faith, believe I died for you and arose again, you can be saved. I'm going to ask you something. The gift is not yours. Eternal life is not yours until you receive it. It's paid for, but he said you can come receive it. So I want to do something this morning. Do we have some kids here? I see some kids. The first boy or girl that comes up here and receives this, I'll give it to them. You're not a boy. You sit back down. Honey, what's your name? Macy. I want to give that to you because you believe me enough to come up to receive it. Now, you use that and enjoy it. If you want to buy candy, buy it. <laughs> God bless you. Now, let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. How difficult was that? What did that cost her? What did she have to do? See, any one of you could have received it. So when I give the invitation, what do you have to do to be saved? He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Just take it. It's already paid for. It's already before you. It's there for your faith to accept it. Believe. Believe. That's, that's not rocket science, is it? He made it as simple as he could. The preacher was riding to another place to preach. A little boy, bubble gum, his lips started singing, Jesus loved the little children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. Jesus loved the little children of the world. He said, boy, that's sweet. Come over here. Get up on my knee. And he said, here's your quarter. He said, I can sing it again. He sung it again. He said, before they got through the trip, he broke him, but said he learned that new truth. For God loved every children of the world. Red, yellow, black and white, they're precious in His sight. I'll never forget going to the quarters with our state evangelism director, Woody Watkins, at that time. And this young guy, the guy came on our bus one Sunday. And we went to the quarters in Millington, sat out on the front doorstep. Mother looked out the door and says, Who are you? Well, I'm the preacher. I want to talk to Billy. Little Billy came out. Little Billy was so black, the lightning bug would follow him in daytime. But he sat down by me and put an arm around him and started talking to Billy, and old Billy got saved. All the way back to the church, old Woody said, I never dreamed it possible. I didn't know we were going to the quarters. I didn't know that's where we were going. He said, I, I just want to thank you for witnessing to Billy. 
Oh, Billy came that night and made his profession of faith, and our people welcomed him, and boy, it was something to see. Because you see, if we sing it, we ought to mean it. God, Jesus loved little children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they're precious in his sight. At the base, we had Japanese to come get saved. We had Chinese to get saved. I could look out on the congregation. You know, before I left there, we had an Alpha American on our deacons to help serve our deacons in our church because they were precious in the sight of God. Beloved, if you drove up and down your road and see what's out there and who needs Jesus, and Jesus died for them, I don't care who they are, he died for them. Aren't you glad of that? Aren't you glad the Bible said, you know, that he, he just gave the salvation to everyone that would believe it, the source, the source is in the name of Jesus. It's not in the name of the church. It's not in the name of Ray Newcomb. I was reminded someone sent me the scripture this morning, remember it's not by your power and might, but it's by the Spirit, thus saith the Lord. I can't save you. Neither can Brother Jimmy or the deacons of this church. Neither can being good save you. Neither by changing your ways save you. But the Bible said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your faith in Jesus. He's the one who went to the cross for us. He's the one who died for us. But notice movement number four. The Bible says the consequences shall not perish, but have eternal life. Shall not perish. Someone gave me some canned fruit or stuff one time, and it was so many different ones doing that. I just set it back in my pantry, and last year I thought, well, I'll get that out, and I'll use it. I took the lid off. And it took the top of my head off. I've never smelled anything so sour in all of my life. I said, my soul. Now look, the goods were still there. But they're just spoiled. That's what perish means. Doesn't mean he's going to wipe you out. Doesn't mean you hit the delete button, it's gone. The Bible said sin will spoil you. And you'll perish. And you'll stink the rest of your life in hell. But he said, if you know Jesus, you'll not perish. You'll be refreshed day by day. You'll be refreshed before God. You'll have new life all the time, and you'll live in heaven for an eternity because he said, look at the promise, eternal life. I like that word. Eternal life. You know what? I'm not going to be saved someday. I was saved. I am saved. I shall be saved. But I'm as saved right now as I'll ever be. Because the day I believed on Jesus, He gave me that gift of eternal life. I'm going to stand before Him one day to cash it in for heaven. The gift of eternal life. Beloved, it'll fit every one of you. It'll last forever. It means forever and ever. I can't explain eternity. I just know it never quits. It never ends. And the day you receive Him, from that day on, you're saved. I like to read in 1 John where the Bible said these things are written to them that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have salvation. I ask people all the time, you saved? Well, I hope so. You saved? I joined the church. You saved? I've been baptized. I had one person to tell me one time, are you saved? Yeah, R.G. Lee baptized me. And I said, R.G. Lee would turn over in his grave if he heard you say that. Just because R.G. Lee baptized you don't mean you're saved. He'll tell you that right quickly. Beloved, the only way you're going to heaven is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to receive the gift of eternal life. And it's your decision. A chaplain in the war came up on a young soldier that had been rowdy, laughed at the chaplain, would not go to church, Made fun of Christianity, but he had gotten shot. Chaplain picked him up and said, John, you know I love you. John looked up and said, yes, Chaplain said, forgive me the way I treated you and the way I talked about you, but would you do me something? Would you tell me how to get Jesus in my life before I can go to heaven? The chaplain said, for the Bible says this, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Whoever believeth in Him, the little boy he said, Repeat it. And the little fellow said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only forgotten Son. Whoever believeth in Him, he said, No, no. 
You quoted it wrong. Say it again. He got back and he said, forgotten, son. He said, no, no. Bright-eyed, he looked up and he says, you know, I said it right the first time. Because all these years, I've forgotten God. But now I want to remember Him. And I want His only, one and only Son to come into my life and save me. Is He forgotten in your life? You've been too busy? Going to wait till some other time or do it later? What about now? Don't let Him be forgotten any longer. Let Him save you this morning. Just like a little girl, just simply but taking it. Would you take Jesus as your Lord and Savior today? Don't you want to go to heaven? You say, I surely do. Well, then get ready. He's already paid for the ticket. He's already got it outlined. Now just receive it.